So the methods we are going to learn uh, are three different things. We are going to learn finite difference, finite volume, and finite element methods. Okay, they differ in basically how they discretize the spatial dimension. Okay, so first of all, all of these methods are methods for discretizing the spatial dimension only. None of these are going to explicitly treat how you discretize time. Why? Because we already know how to do that, right? Yeah, right. So, so for, I mean, there are two, two ways to do that. One way is to you discretize time first using any of our ODE time integration method. What you end up with is a ordinary or partial differential equation that only has derivative in space, right? Then you can do any of this. The second method is you take the partial differential equation with space and time and you first use some of this method to convert it into an ordinary differential equation, right? So you get rid of the derivative in space and you only get an equation with derivative in time. Then you can use, for example, what we are going to do in the homework going on today to solve these equations. Okay, yeah. So, so let's see, uh, for example, what's, what's the difference between these, two, uh, these three methods? So we are going back to MATLAB. So we have several demos. Fin FD demo is finite difference. FV demo is finite volume, and FE demo is finite element. So I'm going to show how these different methods are going to discretize the spatial dimension x in different ways. Okay. So uh, Charlie, can you come up and draw a function? And uh, we'll see how this finite difference method, so this is a finite difference, is going to discretize this function. Is there any, uh, any, any geometries that you explicitly want to show nope. off? Nope. Nope. Okay. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. Can okay. you just, uh, okay. just let's, let's do it again. Not very good at uh, programming this so that you are, it's, it's yeah, just to start from inside the domain and go towards the root. What? Yeah. So let's go back. I think it must have done something weird. I, I don't know what, what it does. Uh, let's, let's do this again. Sorry for that. Let's try again. It's good. I get some practice in drawing my, my shape. Okay. Okay, it's very interesting. I tried. Okay, good, good. So that's an interesting sh function uh, he has drawn. And uh, uh, so you, the, the light red line is what was drawn. And these circles are what the computer stores for that function. Okay, so here we have basically discretized space into, which is actually continuous. Right, but like for a computer, the computer cannot store any infinite numbers. It can only store finite many numbers. So here it has chosen to store from 0 0.1.2 up to 11 numbers. And what are these 11 numbers the computer has stored? 0, 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths. And it stores the value, the of, value the of the function at these discrete points. Huh? It's like yeah, for example, the initial condition or any solution at later stages. We lost a lot of resolution. Right? We lost a lot of resolution. That's right. That's right. That's why, for example, if you want to compute the derivative of the function at this point, right? I mean, you need the derivative. You need the x derivative of the function at this point in order to compute its time derivative, right? 
And if you know it's time derivative, you can use OD solver to evolve the value at this point. But notice that the derivative is like this, and the computer doesn't know that. It only knows that the value on its left grid point is this, on itself is this, on the right grid point is this. I mean, how does the function, how does my OD solver know that the derivative is like that? There's no way, right? So basically in discretizing space using finite difference, we are going to be making a lot of errors except unless our grid is fine enough to capture all these features in this function, right? So for example, if our grid spacing is 0.01 instead of 0.1, I think we should be pretty good, right? Yeah. Can you use the same language to like describe this as when we're describing the, the actual functions themselves, right? Like is this like like you have those like very fine grained uh, features that evolve um, on very short time scales. So is this like a stiff system because it has like the very long time scale features and the very short time scale features, or would you use different language? So you're saying do we use the same language to describe a function like this uh, with the ODE case? Yeah, because like in that like portion of space you have like spatially fine features and spatially large features. Right. Which in which with the equations we call like stiff we equations. We call stiff equations, right. So here we don't really call it stiff functions. Um, I mean this is a, in, in some, in some it's, it's more, it's better to call this a multi-scale function. Right, so uh, that's basically kind of a, a language uh, issue, but this this is a uh, um, it's it's a single function that exhibits different scales in different regions of space, right? So so I think multi-scale is really the best word to communicate something like this. So this is finite difference. Finite difference stores the values of a function at the grid points. But this is uh, actually, this seems to be the most uh, logical thing to do, right? But a lot of methods, finite, neither finite volume nor finite element actually operates in this way. Only finite difference does that. So what finite volume does? Can somebody come and draw another function, another interesting function, <laughs> and see how finite volume discretizes things differently?